Hey, it's Miss Miklos, and in this lecture, we are going to be learning something totally new. And we're going to talk about how to graph um, the functions y equals sine x and also how to graph the function y equals cosine x. So before we um, actually get into filling out these values right here, I want to take a look back at the unit circle. So if we look at all of the quadrantal values, this is um, where I use these ordered pairs. So just a reminder, our radius of our unit circle is 1. That's why this ordered pair is 1, 0, because we're going to the right one, and I'm not moving up or down at all. At pi over 2, it's 0, 1. At pi, it's negative 1, 0, because I'm moving to the left. And at 0, negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, because I'm moving down. We also need to remember sine is y, cosine is x, and tan is y over x. And so we're going to be talking about this, and this is actually where we find all of these quadrantal values. So if we look, sine of 0 is actually at 0. Sine of pi over 2 is at 1. Sine of pi is at 0. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is at negative 1. And at 2 pi, we're starting um, that cycle again. That is a coterminal angle, and it is at 0. Okay, anything past 2 pi, if we look at this, means it's just going to continue. So we get back to 2 pi, we would go around again and again and again. And these same values of 1, negative 1, and 0 would come up again and again and again. Our cosine, the cosine of 0 is 1. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And cosine of 2 pi is 1. I don't know why I wrote a negative. There we go. And I'm actually not going to worry about tangent in this lecture. We're just going to talk about sine and cosine here. And so um, once again, I notice on my unit circle that for cosine we were taking all of those x values and it would just continue again and again and again. Two terms that we're going to use today, the period is the time it takes until the function repeats. And our amplitude is the maximum height of the function. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to graph sine of x. And the way that I'm going to graph this, I'm going to go ahead and label these values pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I'm also going to label the y-axis with 1 and negative 1. So we saw that sine starts at 0, and then it go, goes to 1, back to 0, negative 1, and back to 0. And all those ordered pairs are things that I got from that chart. And some other things that I want to point out. Pi over 4. The sine of pi over 4 is um, radical 2 over 2, which is approximately like 0.7, which is about what that point right here looks like. Pi over 3 is in here. The sine value is 1 half, which is about right here. I'm sorry, that would be pi over 6. Pi over 3 would be radical 3 over 2, which is about 0.9. So we see that all of our trig functions are on this. As soon as we hit 2 pi, it starts again. So this is something that continues on both sides. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and label the negative x-axis and see if we can predict where all these values should go. So I'm going to go down to negative 1, 0, 1, 0. And we notice that this is just one period of the graph. This is a second period of the graph. Okay, this graph continues again and again and again. For cosine, I'm going to go ahead and graph those same four quadrantal angles. And once again, I'm going to graph 1 and negative 1. We notice sine starts at 1 
and then goes to 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And if we repeated this pattern on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and label all those once again. It would go back to 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Okay, so we definitely notice some patterns here, and it continues to the left and to the right forever. In fact, if we kind of look at these two combined with each other, if I took the sine graph and did a horizontal shift to the right pi over 2, it would look like the cosine graph. Okay, and I just want to stress once again, all these values are coming from our unit circle. So if we look at our general equations, there are three characteristics that we're going to list on every graph. The first is the amplitude, and that is found by doing the absolute value of A. Second is the period, which is 2 pi over B. And thirdly, if A is negative, we flip it, and we know this is really like a reflection over the x-axis. So let's go ahead and look at number three. Okay, the first one I'm going to graph is y equals 3 sine x. My a value here to find the amplitude is 3 because I notice that my coefficient here is 3. Secondly, the way that we find the period is 2 pi over b. Our b value here is 1, so our answer would just be 2 pi. And I would say that there is no flip because we do not have a negative out in front. So when we are graphing it, okay, off to the side here, I'm just going to write some things that we need to remember. So we are going to plot four points on each side of the origin, and we are going to label the amplitude and the period. And the reason why we're going to do four on each side of the origin is because I always want to go ahead and graph um, two periods worth of this function. So I have 2 pi and I have negative 2 pi. Our amplitude is 3, so I'm going to go up 3 and I'm also going to go down 3. Now, something that we notice with sine. I know sine of 0 is 0, so 3 times 0 is 0, so I'm going to start at 0. So you guys may want to make a note sine always starts at zero every single time. Then it goes up to the amplitude, back to zero, down to the amplitude, back to zero. Okay, and the reason why this is, if this is really like pi over two, sine of pi over two is one, three times one gives us a y value of three. If I'm working backwards, I'm going to follow that same exact pattern, okay, and this shows me what the graph of y equals 3 sine x looks like. Okay, my second graph, y equals 1 half sine x, this time my amplitude is 1 half. Our period is still 2 pi because our b value is 1. And there is no flip on this one either. Okay, so the difference this time, it's still going to start at zero, but my amplitude is only one half, so I'm just going up and down one half. Okay, so this kind of shows um, what we have called previously a, a vertical stretch, okay, and that would be the three sine x, and a vertical shrink, which was one half sine x. So we're noticing that the stuff that we learned back in chapters 1 and 2 still applies to these functions. Number 4, we have a cosine 1. So I'm going to start with this first one, y equals 2 cosine x. My amplitude is always the absolute value. The reason why it's absolute value is because it's a height. And I know uh, maximum height is positive. So our amp is 2. Our period would be 2 pi divided by 1 or 2 pi. And there is no flip on this. So I'm going to go ahead and plot my four points to the right and my four points to the left. And one thing I want you guys to know is that when we are graphing these, 
um, since we are kind of making this scale, we may not see a big difference um, in comparing graphs that have different periods. If we put them on the same graph, it'd be really evident that one is repeating a lot quicker than another one does. Okay, our amplitude is 2 and negative 2. Now, for cosine, cosine always starts at the amplitude. So sine starts at 0, cosine starts at the amplitude. So it's going to go 2, 0, negative 2, 0, 2. And I'll be honest, guys, we can learn a lot from these graphs and... Um, like if we take the time to really explore them, we can get a lot of info out of them. But I wanna make sure we're not making this harder than it needs to be. Because all we're doing here is really seeing a pattern. Okay, going to the left, I would go zero, negative two, zero, two. Now our second function here, y equals negative two cosine x. My amp is two, because I know the absolute value of negative two is two. The period is going to be two pi. And this time we are going to do a flip. So what that means, it means everything is going to be a reflection. So I'm going to start at negative two, go to zero, two, zero, negative two. And when I work backwards, I'm gonna continue that same pattern and we actually get a really cool looking graph here that kind of looks like some DNA. Okay, number five. Our amplitude is going to be two. Our period, once again, is two pi. And there is no flip on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and label this is 2 pi. Now, I just want to point out, I haven't done this previously, but the reason why um, I'm labeling that fourth one 2 pi is because that is the period. Okay, so whatever our period ends up being, that is what I'm labeling that fourth mark. When I'm graphing it, I know sine starts at 0, and then I'm going to go up to 0, down to 0. And I'm just going to label 2 and negative 2 for us here. then down to zero, up to and zero. Okay, so this graph, all of the points on this graph are showing us the angles and the values of the sine function of this particular equation. Um, we know it continues in both directions even though we do not show arrows. Okay, number six. This time my amplitude, I notice that I don't have anything in front of cosine. So I'm going to say our amplitude is 1. And this is the first time that I see something other than x as my angle. It's 1 half x. So the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is 4 pi. And there is no flip on this one. So I'm going to go to the right 4 and to the left 4. Okay, and here's 4 pi and negative 4 pi. And I'm just going to go up one and down one. And this is an example of what I'm talking about when I'm saying that this isn't necessarily going to look to scale, but that's okay. It is just a sketch. Cosine, I know, starts at the amplitude. And then 0, negative amplitude, 0, amplitude. So I'm following our pattern. Working backwards, I'm going to repeat that exact pattern. And you guys may be seeing that the more we do this, the easier it gets. We really learn what those patterns are. Y equals 2 sine of 3x. So my amplitude here is 2. Our period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 3. And there is no flip on this one because 2 is positive. So I'm going to label this fourth one 2 pi over 3. So just like the last one, we notice like that graph, technically, the period is longer. So if I was graphing to scale, my x-axis would have gone out further. 
This one is smaller, so our x-axis would technically um, not be quite as long. Since it's sine, I'm starting at zero, amplitude, zero, negative amplitude, zero. Negative amplitude, zero, amplitude, zero. And just so you guys know, this is going to be the only portion of the test where you cannot have your calculator with you. And this is going to be the only thing that is not multiple choice. Okay, so our last few look tough, but I just want to show us that it's the same pattern. So our amplitude is one half. Our period this time would be 2 pi divided by 1 third, which is 6 pi, because I know dividing by 1 third is like multiplying by 3. And there is no flip on this. So once again, I'm going to mark this into fourths, and this is going to be 6 pi. To the left, I'm marking it into fourths, and this is going to be negative 6 pi. Okay, and here's 1 and negative 1. So cosine, I start at our amplitude, which is one half, zero, negative amplitude, zero, amplitude. Working backwards, zero, negative amplitude, zero, and our amplitude. Number nine, our amp here is going to be positive one, because I know that's the absolute value of negative one. Our period is 2 pi divided by 1 third once again, which gives me 6 pi. And this time we have a flip. Okay, once again, the reason why I have a flip there is because that A value is negative. Okay, so I went ahead and I just labeled our axes. Cosine, since it's a flip, I'm going to start at the negative amplitude. 0, amplitude, 0, amp, negative amp, I mean. And then I'm going to work backwards. So we can kind of see that when we have that reflection, I'm just doing the complete opposite of what our normal graph would look like. So sine would, since that normally starts at 0, I would still start at 0. But if it's a reflection, instead of going up, I would go down. And last but not least, y equals negative cosine of 4x. So our amplitude here is 1. Our period is 2 pi divided by 4, which is going to be pi over 2. And there is going to be a flip on this one. So I'm going to label this pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And I have 1 and negative 1. Cosine flipped starts at the negative amplitude. And then I'm completing our pattern. And I'm continuing that pattern on the left as well so that we graph two full periods of this. Okay, so I know I went kind of quick through these last few examples, but hopefully um, we've seen enough to kind of get the gist of what we need to do in order to accurately graph our sine and cosine functions.